Okay, good morning, everyone. Please take your seats. I call the meeting of this committee to order. Colleagues, the agenda for this meeting has been distributed. Could I please invite you to adopt the agenda? Are there any objections? None objections. The agenda is adopted. And I remind colleagues that election of committee officers will take place at the end of this meeting. The nominations for candidates closed at 11.30 a.m. this morning. That will say two minutes ago, the nomination is closed. And we have a heavy work today. Cooperation. We have a lot of work to do. We have to complete six items this morning. Six. So I will suggest to place a two minute limit on speakers in the debate. No objections? Then we have a two minutes, two minutes limit on speakers in the debate. And I will continue to close the speakers list for each item at the end of the first contribution in the debate. Thank you. So we move on to the draft resolution, resolution strengthening security in the OSC region. And I call on Mr. Bilorus to introduce the draft resolution. Благодарю вас, госпожа председатель, уважаемые коллеги парламентарии. Я постараюсь кратко представить вам проект резолюции укрепления безопасности в регионе ОБСЕ. Редкие подготовки этой резолюции мы провели консультации с целым рядом национальных делегаций в свете рекомендаций Астанинского саммита ОБСЕ и считаем, что на этой сессии должна быть органической составной частью декларации именно резолюция об укреплении безопасности в регионе ОБСЕ в новых условиях начала 21 века. При этом мы принимали во внимание тот факт, что в сфере безопасности имеет место появление новых угроз, а также э, э, имеет место явление неравномерности темпов глобальной интеграции, э, конфликт противоречивый кри кризисные тенденции и проявление глобального кризиса, что сдерживает экономический рост и развитие демократических процессов. Появились новые вызовы и в деле достижения всеоблемлющей равной безопасности, которой призвано обеспечить ОБСЕ. Поэтому э, при разработке э, проекта резолюции мы стремились подчеркнуть, что ни одно государство без солидарной ответственности не может брать на себя э, ответственность за поддержание мира и стабильности. Это одна из главных идей нашей резолюции. То есть призыв продолжить усилия по солидаризации э, процессов безопасного глобального развития. И э, мы подчеркиваем также, э, что каждое государство свободно выбирать ту или иную систему, которая может присоединяться к системе коллективной безопасности. Мадам председатель, я на этом хотел бы закончить свое представление, учитывая рекомендацию вашу, а также только что состоявшееся решение бюро, чтобы наш комитет рассмотрел все вопросы. Спасибо. Thank you. The debate on the draft resolution is now open and the speaker's list will close after the end of the first contribution. And we do have a two min minutes limit on speakers. And I call on Mr. Guliyev from Azerbaijan. <coughs> Please take the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Today, enhancing the effectiveness of the OEC is among the top priorities on the current OEC agenda. 
It is also true that the organization has not always been successful and consistent in promoting implementation of its own norms and principles, especially with regard to the settlement of the decade-long conflicts within this area. This is why, as parliamentarians, we should take a fresh look at the tools that OEC processes, particularly implementation of its decisions and resolutions, also to see where we could make an additional effort and how we could be more effective in achieving real peace and security in our region. Another important aspect of promoting security is to enhance a cooperation between the OEC and the United Nations as two organizations share the same values and common areas of action. Having regard this necessity, I fully agree with Mr. Belarus that the strategic partnership of OEC with other international security institutions should be reinforced and well coordinated. Dear colleagues, as you know that one of the main expectations from OEC is to enhance its role in getting sooner solution for unresolved conflicts such as Transnistria in Moldova, South Ossetia and Akhbazia in Georgia and Nakhon Karabakh in Azerbaijan which still exist in the OEC region and remain one of the main threats to security and stability. I think it is a time for OEC to put forward all its potential and resources along with other international organizations to have a roadmap on how to return back these occupied and uncontrolled territories in a constitutional setup of Moldova, Georgia, and Azerbaijan. This is a real test for OEC to reaffirm its capacity as a strong and influential organization for maintenance, peace, and security in our region. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I have no more names on my speaker's list. So that concludes the debate. Does Mr. Belarus wish to respond to the debate? Спасибо, госпожа председатель. Я хочу отметить, что здесь в кулуарах нашей сессии я ощутил поддержку этого проекта резолюции. Вы видите, что поправок нет, и выступающий от Изабарджана один, и он очень четко отметил роль этой резолюции. Спасибо. Thank you. And there are no amendments to the draft resolution, so I propose that we now formally move to a vote on the draft resolution. Would those in favor of adopting the draft resolution please raise their voting cards? Will those against please raise the voting cards? Abstentions? Then the draft resolution is adopted. And we move on to the next, next draft resolution, it's the situation in Georgia. And I call on Mr. Cesarba to introduce the draft resolution. Good morning. Uh, dear Madam Chair, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished uh, parliamentarians, it's a pleasure to be speaking at this uh, committee meeting and presenting the draft resolution on the situation in Georgia. I would like to thank 35 parliamentarians coming from nine countries who decided to co-sponsor this important draft. The resolution comes at an appropriate uh, time. In line with 2010 constitutional amendment, the next parliamentary elections in Georgia are due to take place in October this year. The new parliament will have considerably increased authority. The constitutional amendments reduce the powers of the president in favor of the prime minister and the government. Having shifted the political system towards a more parliamentary one, the upcoming election will be held under the the revised legal framework, including a new election code, which was adopted in line with several long-standing OSCE ODIR recommendations. We welcome the considerable progress in Georgia, which was made despite the significant impact and the consequences of the war in August 2008. We as the OSCE Parliamentary Assembly should follow the latest resolution of the Parliamentary Assemblies of the Council of Europe, of NATO and the European Parliament, and look at Georgia and try to sum up 
how the situation in this country looks like after almost, five, uh, almost four years uh, after the ceasefire agreement was mediated by the EU and signed by Georgia and the Russian Federation. First of all, we are still concerned about the humanitarian situation on the displaced persons both in Georgia and in the occupied territories of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, as well as the denial of the right of return to their places of living. The United Nations estimates more than 359,000 internally displaced people in Georgia, and they should have the right to safe and dignified return. We have to ensure access of international humanitarian aid when needed, with the goal of gradual reproachment of the societies of Georgia and its occupied territories. We should call upon all parties to abide the principle principles of international law, implement fully the EU broked, brokered ceasefire agreement and strengthen the Geneva process as the most comprehensive international mechanism to settle the protracted conflict and its subsequent effect. We propose to re-establish re the OSC mission to Georgia as an important mechanism con con for confidence building. We also call on Georgia authority to ensure that upcoming parliamentary elections and the presidential elections will be organized in line with the OEC commitments and recommendations. And let me conclude. I ask you for, for your support for the draft of this resolution and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. I remind everyone that we have a two minutes limit for speakers. And we now go move on to the debate. And uh, I will ask Mr. Stelina from the Czech Republic to take the floor. Pasibo, gospodžá předsedatel, dobrý den, uvažujeme dámy, gospodá. Já bych chtěl poblagalit polskou delegaci i tot projekt položení v Gruzii i za točnosti vyražení i točnosti slavaria. Já očen oceňuji, už to polská delegace nesní snějecá nazývat to, co přišlo v Gruzii точными названиями, не применяют никаких эфемизм, эфемизмов. И э, в этом проекте э, положение в Грузии применяет без стеснения выражение оккупации. Я бы хотел сказать, что это очень важное явление на политической сцене в Европе, когда определенные политические структуры за эту э, псевдокорректность скрывают часто политическую трусливость. Чешский сенат, которого я имею честь быть частью, принял в восьмом году очень жесткую резолюцию, где принимает слова как агрессия. И я думаю, что для такой пресловутой организации, как ОБСЕ, является совсем естественным, чтобы мы принимали точный политический словар. Спасибо за внимание. Thank you. And now the speakers lists are closed. And I have Mr. Guliev from Azerbaijan, Mr. Seretele from Georgia, Mr. Ederholt from the United States, Mr. Kondelaki from Georgia, Mr. Federov from Russia, Mr. Dera from Poland, and Mr. Liepins from Latvia. Have you missed anyone? They are all there. So the speaker's list is closed. And I give the floor to Mr. Gulia from Azerbaijan. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, I'd like to extend my support to the, uh, the draft resolution on the situation in Georgia. I also say to the, uh, the, the author of this resolution, I think this is a very important resolution in order to um, describe the real situation in Georgia with regard to the conflicts and the other issues. I think um, talking about the conflict, uh, the Parliamentary Assembly of OEC, I think should support the main principles uh, on the solution of conflict, which is according to my understanding, the conflict should be uh, resolved within the framework of sovereignty, territorial integrity, and the inviolability of the internationally recognized borders of the Republic of Georgia. The second, I think that all the military forces should be withdrawn from occupied territories of Georgia 
and the militarization of the whole conflict zone. And third one, I think the recognition of the right of forcibly internally displaced people to return back to their place of origin and the restoration of pre-conflict demographic situation. And in, in conclusion, I would like also strongly support the paragraph nine, which calls upon the OECE participating states to reestablish re the OEC to Georgia as a mechanism for confidence building. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now give the floor to Mr. Seretele from Georgia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, on behalf of Georgian delegation, we'd like to uh, express our gratitude to our Polish colleagues and all delegations who are supported and supporting uh, Georgia's sovereignty and territorial integrity uh, in this parliamentary assembly and also in other parliamentary assemblies. Uh, issues are not uh, new for you, uh, but we are first time discussing such a comprehensive, relevant, and uh, strong resolution, uh, which reflects all the realities which we have in our country uh, concerning, first of all, uh, occupation and occupation of territories of Georgia, which is a, uh, namely Abkhazia, Georgia, and South Ossetia, Georgia, and the situation, what's uh, happening with the uh, monitors, what's happening with the international observers this territorial, uh, on that territories, which is quite limited and it's very well described in this, uh, in this statement. Uh, and of course, uh, to take into consideration that all other parliamentary assemblies, the major ones, uh, adopted uh, resolution with even more strong language, which we have here, I think uh, uh, this resolution should gain uh, support of uh, members of OSC. And I think it's uh, fair that organization of cooperation and security should stress those issues and should support the principles which uh, enshrined uh, by, uh, by, by treatises, first of all, Helsinki Final Act. And also the very important uh, I'd like to also to stress the uh, issue of forthcoming elections, which has a special provision in this, uh, in this statement. Uh, and uh, it's uh, very important for us to, uh, to be visible on that, to send observers, and, uh, and to uh, help us to, to have a really fair and free elections. So uh, we'd like to thank once again our Polish colleagues and, and ask everybody to support this delegation, this statement. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to Mr. Kandalaki from Georgia. So, sorry, my mistake, my mistake. It's Mr. Ederholt from the United States first. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to uh, uh, urge support of this uh, supplementary item uh, and uh, adoption. Uh, the U.S. strongly supports the sovereignty and the territorial integrity of Georgia. The United States has uh, repeatedly called on Russia to withdraw its forces to their pre-conflict positions, as Russia has pledged to do in the EU-brokered ceasefire agreement of August and September of 2008. Uh, we also call on participating states to restore an OSCE mission in Georgia, uh, a uh, mechanism for much-needed confidence building as a resolution state. So uh, in conclusion, I urge adoption of this uh, uh, supplementary item and urge my colleagues to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Mr. Kandalaki from Georgia. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I also want to thank uh, Mr. Sherba and Polish delegation for this very timely initiative. This initiative is timely because the issues that are fleshed out in the resolution and the draft resolution are relevant uh, for, I would say, the whole uh, OSC area because they are of concern uh, in one way or another to all of us. What are these issues? It's, of course, at, as it was mentioned, the return of the OSC to Georgia. It's the question of IDPs, and it's extremely important that there is this emphasis on the IDPs and their right of return. Georgia is a very small country, and it has to deal with 300,000 IDPs, which, of course, is a significant uh, uh, problem and injustice. It's, of course, the return uh, it access of the European Union monitoring mission to the occupied territories. 
as it was prescribed by the EU brokered ceasefire agreement, which remains unfulfilled, unfortunately, by one of the parties uh, uh, of the conflict. And finally, it's of course the uh, recognition of Georgia's progress, because this recognition is very important encouragement to Georgia to continue these reforms, to hold free and fair elections, to hold transparent elections, and finally uh, br come closer to the realization of dream of many Georgians, which is, of course, return to the full-fledged uh, membership in the European and Euro-Atlantic family of uh, free, and, uh, free and democratic nations. So I call your support, for your support, for this very timely and important supplementary item. Thank you. Thank you, and uh, I give the floor to Mr. Federov from Russia. Уважаемый госпожа председатель, уважаемые депутаты, наша делегация явно видит в, этой, в этом документе одностороннюю грузинскую ангажированность документа. Во-первых, 8 августа 2008 года в результате нападения Грузии на Южную Осетию и размещавшийся там миротворческий российский контингент были ликвидированы все многосторонние политические, дипломатические, военные механизмы регулирования многолетних грузино-осетинского и грузино-абхазского конфликта. То есть в результате этого были сломаны те миростроительные механизмы, которые наряду с Россией строила и ОБСЕ. Это привело к утрате Грузии территориальной ценности и образованию получивших уже международное признание суверенных государств – Республики Южной Осетии, Республики Абхазия. Формулировки поэтому первых пунктов э, декларации полностью игнорируют принципиально новые реалии, сложившиеся в Закавказье после августа 2008 года, и предлагают искать решение сложившихся внутриполитических конфликтов в Грузии на основании Киевской декларации Парламентской ассамблеи ОБСЕ 2007 года, резолюции Совета безопасности ООН, тоже уже устаревшей, И уверен, что наш комитет не могут устроить эти ссылки на, на те документы, которые, в общем-то, сегодня не имеют никакого отношения к реально сложившейся обстановке. Второе. Если говорить о приближающихся выборах в Грузии, о чем говорил грузинский депутат. Дело в том, что, на наш взгляд, явно в документе дана завышена комплементарная и необъективная оценка демократической, демократичности политической жизни в Грузии в свете вот этих выборов. Оптимизм автора проекта о неуклонной и необратимой эволюции грузинского избирательного законодательства не разделяется, например, Еврокомиссией которая опубликовала 15 мая этого года доклад об отношениях Евросоюза с восточными соседями, констатирует, что в принятом в декабре 2011 года избирательном кодексе Грузии парламент Грузии в очередной раз проигнорировал настоятельную рекомендацию Венецианской комиссии об изменении границ избирательных округов. Так, для кругов с преимущественно грузинским электоратом число избирателей варьируется от 6 до 15 тысяч Спасибо, я завершаю. То в этих районах, там, где проживают азербайджанцы и армяне, значит, округа 120-150 тысяч. И последнее. Считаем абсолютно некорректным использование словосочетаний де-факто применительно к властям Абхазии и Южной Осетии так как это суверенные республики имеют легитимные органы как законодательной, так и исполнительной власти. Еще раз заявляю, Sorry, что с позиции нашей делегации этот документ абсолютно неприемлем. Спасибо. Thank you. So I remind once again that we have a two minute minutes limit on speakers. And we go to the next speaker on my list. It's Mr. Dero from Poland. Dear colleagues. From uh, 2007, people from Poland have had uh, in the means uh, the declaration from Kyiv about Georgia, and they still remember the uh, commitment of the former OSC mission, the Georgia which wanted the settlement and uh, the end uh, of the conflict of the northern frontiers and territories of Georgia. Polish government and Polish truly stand for integrity and sovereignty of Georgia, 
and at the same time they uh, are uh, concerned about the situation people who live in the occupied territories of cannot come back to their places of living. We were encouraged by the action in 2010, which were so close in, uh, to the international standards and hope uh, uh, the upcoming uh, election in October 2012 and presidential election in uh, 2013 will be fair and free. Poland absolutely supports the OEC Parliamentary Assembly, which wants to obey the international law and implement fully the IU brokered ceasefire agreement and strengthen the Geneva process. We wish the government and the Russian Federation, uh, as well the authorities of Abkhazia, Georgia, and South Ossetia, Georgia to allow European Union monitoring mission uh, 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 unimpeded access to the occupied territories of Abkhazia, Georgia, and South Ossetia. Georgia as was previously agreed the ceasefire agreement. Uh, all country would be fully, uh, fully satisfied if all international displaced persons could re uh, return the, uh, to their places of living and to access them all kind of aid they need. To sum up, we, the people of Poland, believe that the next election uh, in 2012 and presidential election in 2013 will be due to all these aims uh, I have many t mentioned and they will be organized according to OEC uh, commitments and recommendations. Thank you. Thank you. And I give the floor to Mr. Liepins from Latvia. Thank you very much. I'd like to start off with a um, comment regarding the uh, Russian Federation's claim regarding the OSCE conditions for elections in Georgia. As far as I know, 95%, this is according to the Council of Europe, 95% of these conditions have been met. And to ask a country like Georgia uh, to have constituencies of equal size, I think is virtually impossible. So that was a demand or a recommendation that I think was not possible to fulfill. However, I want to talk about something else, a broader issue, and it seems to me that it is totally unacceptable that in the 21st century, and particularly uh, with regard to OSCE conditions, that a participating state can invade another participating state. And it is re reprehensible that the invading state then engages in ethnic cleansing in the occupied areas and then uprooting the lives of thousands of innocent people. And it is incumbent on us to do everything in our power to effect the dignified return of the displaced persons. Latvia offers its full support to this resolution and thanks the Polish representative, Mr. Michal Sierba, for sponsoring it. Thank you very much. Thank you, and that concludes the debate on the draft resolution, and we will now move to consider the amendments. And we have only one amendment to this resolution, and I shall allow the proposer to speak for a maximum one minute. Uh, and then I shall ask the sponsor for his opinion. Uh, I will call Ms. von Kamun Tobadel of Germany to propose amendment number one. Vielen Dank, Frau Vorsitzende. Uns liegt natürlich allen die Situation in Georgien sehr am Herzen. Und natürlich wollen wir insbesondere dafür sorgen, dass es dort demokratische, freie und faire Wahlen gibt. Aber dazu ist es notwendig, dass vor allem der Zugang zu den Medien für alle beteiligten Parteien und für alle, die sich an den Wahlen beteiligen möchten, gewährleistet ist. Wer sich etwas genauer mit Georgien beschäftigt, der sieht, dass das leider nicht immer der Fall ist. Und für die Oppositionsparteien ist es nach wie vor nicht einfach und nicht immer gewährleistet. Deswegen würde ich mich freuen, wenn Sie meinem, ähm, meiner Ergänzung folgen, indem wir das einfach noch mal in Paragraf 10 unterstreichen. Vielen Dank. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against Amendment number one? What is the sponsor's opinion? I, I agree with the amendment. Thank you. 
Thank you. Then we shall put amendment number one to the, to the vote. Those in favor of amendment number one, please raise the voting cards. Anyone against? Abstentions? One, two, yes. Then amendment number one is adopted. Uh, so we, we shall now formally move to a vote on the draft resolution. All those in favor of the draft resolution, please raise the voting cards. Anyone against? Abstentions? Against. Mm -hmm. You are against? Against? Yes. Thank you. Abstentions? One. Yeah. The draft resolution is adopted. Then we move on to the next resolution. Uh, that's enhancing cross-border cooperation policies in post-conflict scenarios. And I call on Mr. Sanchez Amor to, under to introduce the draft resolution. Gracias, Presidenta. Ayer mismo en esta sala pudimos hablar, pudimos oír a Ricardo Miglori o a Balburga hablar del problema de Moldavia. El, el otoño pasado tuve ocasión de visitar Dubasari, una, un distrito de Moldavia eh, dividido por esa frontera eh, recientemente creada y de facto entre Transnistria y Moldavia. Y ahí pude ver cómo eh, algunos granjeros que mantenían su casa en lo que resultó Moldavia tenían sus granjas en lo que era ya Transnistria. Este tipo de problemas a veces no se aprecian cuando se miran desde un, una perspectiva muy macro eh, las dificultades de un conflicto. He tenido ocasión de ver conflictos en fronteras, por ejemplo, la de Honduras y El Salvador para la Comisión Europea, o también hace años la frontera entre Irlanda e Irlanda del Norte, entre Dundalk y Newry, eh, por cuenta de la Asociación Europea de Regiones Fronterizas. Yo creo que a la OSCE le falta una política amplia, horizontal y, mult y multisectorial de cooperación transfronteriza. La OSCE y la Asamblea Parlamentaria tienen una amplia experiencia en conflictos, en rehabilitación posconflictos. Hay una gran variedad de actividades de restauración de la estabilidad. Tenemos las experiencias de las CBMs, las No Military Confidence Building Measures, pero creo que sería útil tener una visión comprensiva, sistemática, de conjunto, de una política de cooperación transfronteriza. La diplomacia en una situación de posconflicto se suele hacer de capital a capital, entre ministerios de exteriores, es una diplomacia de aeropuertos que sobrevuela incluso físicamente el lugar donde más se sufre el conflicto, la zona caliente, la zona de roce, que es eh, la frontera. Hablamos en nuestras resoluciones de una aproximación de abajo hacia arriba de los problemas. Este es un buen ejemplo. Los conflictos no están resueltos solo cuando se consideran resueltos en las cancillerías y en los ministerios de exteriores. Los conflictos están resueltos cuando la frontera vuelve a ser una zona de contacto y de desarrollo, cuando la frontera deja de ser considerada solo desde el punto de vista de la seguridad. Y para que esa seguridad sea duradera hay que tender puentes. Los procesos de paz o los procesos de integración regional se deciden en tratados, pero se cosen en cada frontera. Una política de cooperación transfronteriza legitima políticamente los acuerdos que dan fin a un conflicto, es un elemento preventivo de tentaciones de recurso a la violencia y es un elemento democrático porque incorpora a las autoridades locales y regionales. Así que, queridos colegas, lo que pido en esta resolución, y termino, es que la OSCE y la Asamblea Parlamentaria tengan una visión amplia, comprensiva de la cooperación transfronteriza como un elemento esencial y horizontal en las situaciones de posconflicto. Gracias. Thank you. Then we move on to the debate on the draft resolution, and I give the floor to Mr. Migliore from Ipoli. Signor Presidente, colleghi, abbiamo pochissimo tempo, quindi sarò eh, veramente breve. Per ringraziare il collega Amor e la delegazione spagnola per aver avanzato questa proposta, che è una proposta di grande intelligenza politica, perché laddove c'è una vera autentica collaborazione economica, sociale, culturale, transfrontaliera, c'è la prevenzione dei conflitti. Questa è anche la cultura che proviene da chi come il collega Mori, io e tanti altri qui, provengono dal sistema delle regioni, dal sistema delle autonomie, dal sistema dei poteri locali. Perché il sistema dei poteri locali all'interno dell'Unione Europea, 
il Comitato per le Regioni a Bruxelles è una fucina di idee che noi dobbiamo come organizzazione considerare una grande ricchezza per la cooperazione e la pace in Europa. Questo volevo dire a nome della delegazione italiana ringraziando il collega Mor per aver sottolineato una strategia, non solo una risoluzione per la nostra organizzazione. Ok, then the speaker's list is closed and I have Mr. Silva from Portugal on my speaker's list and I have, I can't see it's so dark, but we will find out who it is up there. Did I miss anyone then? Yes, you're on. You're yeah. On. You're okay. Okay. Then I, then I give the floor to Mr. Silva. Merci, madame. Euh, OCE veut dire euh, coopération et coopération euh, frontalière aussi. C'est pour euh, cela que moi-même et la délégation portugaise saluent et félicitent notre collègue José Sánchez Amor d'Espagne parce qu'il a su interpréter euh, un des traits les plus importants de l'OCE la coopération, coopération frontalière. Les politiques frontalières à l'intérieur et à l'extérieur de l'Europe sont fondamentales. En effet, elles sont fondamentales, je disais, pour le développement humain, traduit dans les dimensions culturelles, économiques et politiques. Il faut faire augmenter le niveau de l'interconnexion frontalière pour prévenir les conflits, pour maintenir la paix et pour assurer surtout le développement des peuples. Il faut accroître la coopération transfrontalière et répandre les valeurs de la coopération, les valeurs de la liberté, les valeurs de la solidarité, la valeur de la paix et la valeur surtout de la coopération. Merci. Thank you. So now I give the floor to the man who's in the darkness, and that's Mr. Murphy from Ireland. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to congratulate the speaker on the resolution, uh, my Spanish colleague. It's very well drafted, and uh, Ireland has some experience in this area. And as he said in his remarks, a comprehensive vision is very important if we are to achieve lasting peace between communities across borders. So just to support the resolution. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the debate on the draft resolution, and we now move forward to vote on the draft resolution. Would those in favor of adopting the resolution please raise the voting cards? Anyone against? Abstentions? Okay, then the draft resolution is adopted. The next one is support for the United Nations global counterterrorism strategy and I call on Mrs. Glansman Hunkeler to introduce the draft resolution. Yeah, thank you, Frau Vorsitzende. Geschätzte Damen und Herren, der Resolutionsentwurf, den ich Ihnen heute vorlege, möchte ich darauf aufmerksam machen, dass eine wirksame Terrorismusbekämpfung nicht nur auf die Schaffung bzw. Aufrechterhaltung der öffentlichen Sicherheit abzielen sollte, sondern erfordert den tatsächlichen Ursachen des Terrorismus entgegenzuwirken, also dort einzugreifen, wo die Motivation entsteht, zu, zu terroristischen Mitteln zu greifen. Zu den Ursachen des Terrorismus gehören unter anderem länger andauernde, ungelöste Konflikte, fehlende Rechtsstaatlichkeit und Menschenrechtsverletzungen, ethnische, nationale und religiöse Diskriminierung, politische Ausgrenzung, sozioökonomische Marginalisierung und Mangel an guter Regierungsführung. Die Ursachen des Terrorismus stehen zudem oft in engem Zusammenhang mit entwicklungspolitischen Fragen. Es gibt keine Sicherheit ohne Entwicklung und umgekehrt aber auch keine Entwicklung ohne ein sicheres Umfeld. Und weder Sicherheit noch Entwicklung sind möglich ohne den Respekt der Menschenrechte. Wir wissen leider aus Erfahrung, dass auch liberale und demokratische Gesellschaften keine Garantie dafür bieten, Terrorattacken zu verhindern. Dennoch, sie sind unsere beste Möglichkeit, diese zu verhindern. Wichtig ist es auch zu betonen, dass Terrorismus nicht einer Religion, Nationalität, Rasse, Zivilisation oder ethnischen Gruppe zugeschrieben werden kann. Auch wenn noch immer der islamistisch motivierte Terrorismus im Zentrum der internationalen Aufmerksamkeit steht, hat spätestens der Massenmord auf der norwegischen Insel Utøya im letzten Sommer gezeigt, 
dass auch Bürger westlicher Staaten anfällig für Terrorismus sein können. Die vorliegende Resolution versucht der Komplexität des Phänomens Terrorismus gerecht zu werden und ist Ausdruck der Erkenntnis, dass man Terrorismus nur wirksam bekämpfen kann, wenn man sich mit seinen Ursachen auseinandersetzt. Besten Dank für die Unterstützung der Resolution. Thank you. The, de the debate is now open and I give the floor to Mr. Ernan from Turkey. Thank you. Thank you, Chairwoman. <clears throat> First of all, I would like to thank the sponsor for this draft resolution. As a country that <clears throat> has suffered for a long time because of terrorism, Turkey fully supports the draft resolution on support for the United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy. We condemn terrorism in all its forms and affirm our readiness to cooperate with all OSCE participating states in the fight against this scourge. OSCE's comprehensive approach to security is in line with the UN strategy. This involves dealing with not only the manifestations of terrorism, but also the conditions conducive to it. Cognizant of this fact, Turkey has been working on a comprehensive plan in its counterterrorism efforts. The national fight against terrorism cannot be completed without international cooperation. Strengthening the international legal framework by supporting the ratification of international agreements on counterterrorism is necessary. This would create the necessary legal basis for our states to cooperate efficiently and in particular terms. The implementation of international agreements is as important as their ratification. We must make sure that the provisions of cooperation do not remain only in this text but materialize fully. Taking this opportunity, I would like to attract your attention to a relatively new multi multilateral body, Global Counterterrorism Forum. This goal of the forum is strengthening global counterterrorism architecture through promotion of international solidarity, coherent action and cooperation. It aims to assist countries as they work to confront the threat posed by terrorism. It does this, this on, on a demand-driven basis. Turkey and the US are currently co-chairs of the forum, uh, which recently held its ministerial meeting in Istanbul. We encourage all participating states to familiarize themselves with the activities of this forum and cooperate with its members in their active fight against terrorism. Thank you. Thank you. And we now have closed the speakers list and I have Mr. Kovalo from Russia on my speakers list. Have I missed anyone? No, I haven't. And the speakers uh, list is closed and Mr. Kovalo has the floor. Kovalo. Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to say that Мы всегда высказывали свои озабоченности по, по поводу отсутствия стратегии борьбы с международным терроризмом. Вот в общем мировом плане а такая стратегия отсутствует полностью. И мы очень благодарны автору резолюции Клод Херш из Швейцарии, которая, на наш взгляд, делает первый шаг в выработке такой стратегии и очень важный шаг, потому что пока государства и правительства раздирают внутренние противоречия, пока все силы политиков тратятся на отстаивание своей точки зрения, на споры, в это время общий враг, имя которому международный террор, укрепляется и финансово, и идеологически. Очень важно выработать консолидированную позицию противодействию этому явлению, опаснейшему явлению. Мы поддерживаем резолюцию и будем голосовать за. Thank you. And we do have another speaker because he was on the wrong speakers list. So I give the floor to Mr. Allison from Canada. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And I want to congratulate the uh, sponsor of the supplement rater for bringing this important matter to the attention of our assembly. From my perspective, underlining the supplementary item is the need for the OSCE participating states to strengthen their collaboration regarding counterterrorism. Indeed, terrorism is a threat faced by many of our countries, but which cannot be overcome by any one. The United Nations Global Counterterrorism Strategy offers an important common stra strategic and operational framework to fight terrorism at the national, regional, and international levels. For its part, Canada is committed to implementing the strategy and has used it as an important vehicle to guide Canada's international action on matters of counterterrorism. In this respect, Canada is currently chairing the review process of the strategy for 2000 
and 12. However, our efforts to combat terrorism can only be as strong and efficient as our ca uh, ca capabilities allow, particularly regarding the rule of law-based criminal justice responses to terrorism. To help states strengthen their capacity to fight terrorism, Canada has been playing an important role in delivering capacity building assistance programs in the OSC region, including with many partners for cooperation as well as globally. Some of these activities have involved in reducing access to weapons of mass destruction by terrorists. Others have become involved to support the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime in its efforts to build domestic capacity among UN member states. Notably, the Office on Drugs and Crime is a recipient of considerable support from Canada's counterterrorism capacity building program, the anti-crime capacity building program, and the Afghanistan counter narcotics program, among others. At the review meeting of the global counterterrorism strategy held just last week, Canada announced up to an additional $8 million contribution in the support of capacity building projects designed to enhance counterterrorism cooperation globally. Among Canada's domestic counterterrorism initiatives is notably established a financial transitions report analysis center to prevent and deter terrorist financing activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. That concludes the debate on the draft resolution and there are no amendments. So we now move forward to vote on the draft resolution. Would those in favor of adopting the resolution please raise their voting cards? Anyone against? Abstentions? Then the draft resolution is adopted. The next one is countering violent extremism and radicalization that lead to terrorism. I call on Ms. Glansman Hunkler to introduce the draft resolution. Ja, Frau Vorsitzende, geschätzte Damen und Herren, im Namen von Plodesch und im Namen der Schweizer Delegation vertrete ich diese Resolution. Da Terrorismus keine nationalen Grenzen kennt, braucht es zu seiner Bekämpfung eine enge Zusammenarbeit und ein kohärentes Vorgehen der internationalen Staatengemeinschaft. Die globale Strategie zur Bekämpfung des Terrorismus, die 2006 von der UNO-Generalversammlung verabschiedet wurde, stellt einen nützlichen normativ-politischen Referenzrahmen im Umgang mit diesem Phänomen dar. Die Strategie beinhaltet einen umfassenden Ansatz, der sich nicht nur mit, der, mit den Auswirkungen, sondern auch den Ursachen von Tourismus widmet. Terrorismus widmet. Er setzt sich aus vier Säulen zusammen. Die erste Säule befasst sich mit der Verminderung der Ursachen, die zu Terrorismus führen können. Die zweite Säule mit Prävention und Repression. Die dritte mit dem Aufbau staatlicher Kapazitäten. Und die vierte mit dem Schutz der Menschenrechte und der Rechtsstaatlichkeit. Zur Umsetzung der globalen UNO-Strategie braucht es allerdings eine gute und effektive regionale Implementierung. Nur wenn regionale und nationale Anliegen wahrgenommen werden, ist es möglich, sogenannte Ownership on the Ground für die integrale Umsetzung der vier Säulen zu schaffen. Und nur dann wird auch die globale Strategie regional und national tatsächlich beachtet. Die OSZT mit ihrem Fokus auf Friedenssicherung stellt ein geeignetes Forum dar, dieses Ziel zu erreichen. Entsprechend möchte ich Ihnen den Entwurf für eine Resolution unterbreiten, welche die Zusammenarbeit der OSZT mit der UNO sowie die Bedeutung der globalen Strategie der UNO für die OSZT-Staaten unterstreicht. Besten Dank für die Unterstützung. Thank you. Then we move on to the debate on this resolution. Uh, and I give the floor to Mr. Kulkuloglu from Turkey. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to thank you uh, for this successful draft resolution to my colleague from Switzerland. Violent extremism and uh, radicalization that lead to terrorism is a serious concern to Turkey. We fully share the emphasis in the re uh, resolution that terrorism cannot and should not be associated with any religion, nationality, race, civilization, or ethnic group. With this understanding, we believe that an effective and comprehensive counterterrorism strategy should prevent the process of radicalization that lead individuals and groups to support and to resort terrorism. 
This being said, we need to discuss more about the terrorism activities of illegal extreme right groups in Europe as an integral part of this phenomenon. Unfortunately, the conditions conducive to spread to the spread of this type of terrorism are not given enough attention. The fact that democratic societies in Europe cannot prevent the rise of this kind of terrorism is a source of concern for my country. The ongoing economic and financial crisis in Europe only serves to exacerbate this issue. We should stand united against the spread of terrorism indiscriminately, regardless of the ideologies behind it. This is the only way that we can move forward in our corp uh, cooperation efforts. Thank you. Thank you. And now the speaker's list is closed, and I have Mr. Corus from Netherlands on my list. Are there any more? Ma Ma Madam Chair, uh, thank you. Excuse me, just wait a oh. minute. <laughs> no more speakers. Okay, then the speaker's list is closed and the floor is yours. Madam Chair, thank you. I uh, warmly uh, welcome this draft resolution because I uh, myself tabled this issue and I, uh, I see that a lot of things uh, is coming back and it is needed because if we uh, read this morning Sunday Telegraph and Sunday Mirror, it was... Uh, 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 written there that the uh, suspect of terrorism is captured. So it is still actual, and I would like to uh, add some uh, points uh, which could um, improve the text and strengthen the, the, the contents, I think. First of all, the local approach, because the need, the, there is a need for a, a center. We created, for example, in the Netherlands, a center where uh, parents, uh, uh, teachers could uh, call when they have signals of radicalizations of youngsters, because if there is nothing, the signals of radicalizations are disappearing. Secondly, it is good to focus on the issue of internet. Through a poisoning, especially of youngsters by religious groups, uh, they are uh, getting radicalized uh, through internet. I think it's good to add that. Thirdly, I call also uh, upon my colleagues here, because in the Netherlands we face also, and in other European um, countries, that under the cover of cultural and other foundations, all kind of radical groups, of terrorist groups, getting even grants from the governmental sides and continue their work. And finally, I put a motion in the Dutch Parliament a couple of years ago, which leads to the creation of uh, the ICCT, that means the International Centre for counter-terrorism, and uh, that was needed that, uh, because I believe that we also have to look for other approaches next to the classical approach of law enforcement, because how is it possible that, let's say, a Muslim background youngster in Britain or in another country get radicalized? How is that possible? So that center brings experts from the uh, non-classical uh, sectors together, from the psychology, from religious studies, to, to uh, develop uh, also programs to prevent that radicalization leads to terrorism. I thank you. Thank you, and that concludes the debate on the draft resolution. And there are no amendments to this resolution, so now we formally move to the vote. Would those in favor of adopting the draft resolution please raise their voting cards? Anyone against? Abstentions? Then the draft resolution is adopted. And we are continuing to the next one. And that's the development of OSCE cooperation with Afghanistan by 2014 and beyond. And I call on Mr. De Donea to introduce the draft resolution. Merci, Madame la Présidente. Plus de 80 nations et organisations internationales réunies ce dimanche à Tokyo pour soutenir l'Afghanistan ont promis de fournir plus de 16 milliards de dollars d'aide civile d'ici à 2015 à ce pays et de continuer à le financer au moins jusqu'en 2017. Cette décision est évidemment extrêmement importante pour minimiser au maximum le risque d'implosion de l'Afghanistan après le départ des troupes de l'OTAN. Si l'Afghanistan venait à imploser après le départ des troupes de l'OTAN en 2014, ce serait une catastrophe compte tenu du fait que la sécurité et la stabilité à long terme de l'Afghanistan 
a un impact et une importance directe pour la sécurité de l'espace de l'OSCE. Voilà presque dix ans que l'OSCE collabore, coopère avec l'Afghanistan. Cette coopération prend la forme d'assistance dans les domaines de la sécurité des frontières, de la formation de la police et de la lutte contre le trafic de drogue. La déclaration commémorative d'Astana souligne le besoin de contribuer effectivement aux efforts internationaux collectifs visant à promouvoir un Afghanistan stable, indépendant, prospère et démocratique. Et pas plus tard que le 14 mai dernier à Vienne, M. Yann Kubich, le représentant spécial en Afghanistan de M. Ban Ki-moon, euh, appelait à une coopération accrue de l'OSCE avec l'Afghanistan dans les différents euh, secteurs. Notre résolution, la résolution que je vous propose d'adopter, est donc parfaitement d'actualité et donc parfaitement à propos. L'OSCE a indubitablement une valeur ajoutée en ce qui concerne la coopération avec l'Afghanistan en raison de la présence de ses missions sur, une, sur divers pays, dans divers pays partenaires limitrophes, voisins de l'Afghanistan. Et c'est la raison pour laquelle je vous propose dans cette résolution tout d'abord que notre Assemblée appelle les États participants de l'OSCE et les autres États partenaires pour la coopération de l'OSCE à renforcer leur dialogue et leur consultation politique avec l'Afghanistan. La résolution appelle également les États participants de l'OSCE et les États partenaires à accroître d'ici à 2014 et au-delà leur contribution aux nouveaux projets de coopération dans les trois dimensions et aux activités de l'OSCE pour un renforcement de la sécurité de la frontière de l'Afghanistan avec ses voisins d'Asie centrale, membres de l'OSCE, et ce, pour la formation de la police afghane à des tâches de police civile proches des communautés sur le terrain, pour la lutte contre les menaces transnationales, notamment la lutte contre la drogue et autres trafics, et pour la promotion des valeurs, normes et engagements de l'OSCE dans les trois dimensions, notamment au Border Management Staff College de l'OSCE à Dushanbe, à l'Académie de l'OSCE à Bishkek et dans me, les I centres have, have de formation des États participants et des États partenaires pour la coopération. Il est clair que les actions à mener sont des actions à mener dans des pays voisins de l'Afghanistan et pas en Afghanistan, mais... Je vais conclure, madame, mais je trouve vraiment qu'on limite très fort les temps de parole. Je pense que l'organisation de nos travaux n'est pas bonne. Hier, notamment au Forum méditerranéen, euh, il y a eu énormément de mécontentement parce que l'organisation des travaux mène à l'étouffement des débats. Mais je vais donc conclure. Euh, les autres points de la résolution mais demandent à ce que euh, l'on euh, travaille dans le cadre de, du renforcement du processus des processus démocratiques en Afghanistan. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Thank you. And I will remind the committee that they all agreed on limiting speaking times. So we move on to the debate. And uh, the first on my list is Mr. Wassan from France. Oui, merci, Madame le Président, mes chers collègues. Notre très estimé collègue de Donéa a eu raison de poser la question de la coopération avec l'Afghanistan d'ici 2014 et au-delà. Car le défi posé à la communauté internationale en Afghanistan est bien de définir une stratégie pour la période qui suivra le retrait des troupes militaires de la FIAS. Cette stratégie doit d'abord bien évidemment être sécuritaire. L'État afghan doit prendre en charge la sécurité de sa population et de ses territoires. Le retrait ne doit pas aller de pair avec le chaos. La constitution de forces armées et de police afghane a été l'une des priorités de la communauté internationale depuis 2008. Cela a été très difficile, mais la formation, l'équipement et la montée en puissance des forces afghanes ont finalement permis de leur transférer les responsabilités de sécurité dans des zones qui couvrent aujourd'hui les trois quarts de la population. Cet effort, pour être efficace dans la durée, ne doit pas être interrompu. Il faut déterminer le niveau de contribution des donateurs et le format exact de la mission des forces alliées encore présente après 2014. Cette stratégie doit aussi comporter une dimension politique. 
La coalition a mis un certain temps à développer une approche civile ou militaire, et cette approche, bien que prioritaire depuis 2008, a souvent souffert d'un manque de coordination et d'intégration avec l'ensemble des acteurs présents sur le terrain. L'enjeu est double. Le premier est de créer, au sein de l'administration afghane, les capacités nécessaires pour gérer les programmes de développement en intégrant davantage le niveau local et la société civile. Les donateurs étrangers devront résister à la tentation de croire que ces dépenses seront plus utiles si elles sont entièrement gérées par eux. Le deuxième enjeu est celui des négociations avec les talibans aujourd'hui en panne. Seul un processus d'ouverture incluant les insurgés, prêts à renoncer à la violence, est susceptible de conduire à une paix durable et équitable. Mon optimisme, vous l'avez compris, mes chers collègues, est mesuré, mais j'ai confiance à la fois en la capacité des Afghans à s'approprier leur avenir et assumer leurs responsabilités, et en celle de la communauté à ne pas répéter les erreurs passées. L'OSCE doit bien évidemment y contribuer. Je me réjouis de la volonté affichée par le secrétaire général de l'OSCE de donner une nouvelle impulsion à l'engagement de notre organisation vis-à-vis -vis de cet État partenaire. J'encourage notre Assemblée à y prendre toute sa part. Thank you. And we are now closing our speakers' lists. And in, on my list, it's Mr. Allison from Mr. Allison from Canada. It's Mr. Penkalski from Poland, Mr. Derwecki from Italy, Mr. D'Amico from Italy, and Mr. Ernan from Turkey. Have you missed anyone? No, we haven't. And then the speakers' list is closed. And somebody I, there. There is somebody there. Yeah, Finland, I think. No, Denmark. Yeah, I give the floor to Mr. Allison from Canada. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, and I, if there's any consolation, I think you're doing a great job. Uh, fellow parliamentarians, I want to congratulate the sponsor of the supplementary item for highlighting this important matter to our assembly. From my perspective, underlying the supplementary item is a strong commitment on the part of the over 60 countries and international organizations participating in the UN-mandated NATO-led mission to leave Afghanistan to Afghans, better governed and self-sustaining, more stable and secure. In line with the supplementary item, Canada's engagement with Afghanistan until 2014 supports Afghan-developed priorities and sustains progress in key areas essential to Afghanistan's future, including investing in the future of Afghan children and youth through development programming in education and health, advancing security, the rule of law, and human rights, including through the provision of up to 950 Canadian force trainers and their support personnel and approximately 45 Canadian civilian police to help train Afghan national security forces, promoting regional diplomacy and delivering humanitarian assistance. Moreover, on May 21, 2012, at the NATO Leader Summit in Chicago, Canada announced that it will contribute $110 million per year for three years to support the sustainability of the Afghan national security forces. Beginning in 2015, that is, beyond the end of Canada's military training mission on March 31st, 2014. This investment will ensure the future stability of a secure and democratic Afghanistan and reflects Canada's role in ensuring that the ANSF can assume full responsibility for their own national security. At the same time, and this is another point underlying the supplementary item, Afghanistan will continue to face many challenges including meeting international human rights obligations, combating corruption, strengthening the rule of law, increasing tolerance of religious freedoms, combating drug trafficking, strengthening its border security, and protecting women's rights as enshrined in the Afghan constitution. The OSCE has an important role to play in helping its partner for cooperation overcome these challenges. It has already undertaken many initiatives, particularly regarding border security and election reform, However, there is room for enhanced political dialogue and the consultations in order to strengthen Afghanistan's voluntary impl implementation of OSCE standards, principles, and commitments in all three dimensions and ultimately contribute to international and regional peace and security. Thank you. Thank you. I now give the floor to Mr. Penkalski from Poland. Здравствуйте всем. Афганский народ с энтузиазмом взял на себя выполнение трудного предприятия, направленного на создание нового, нового облика государства. Предстоит сотрудничество со стороны международного совещания были поддержкой для этих стремлений. В стрефе политической жизни эта страна уже создала э, и хотя пока хрупкие основания. 
Все в большой степени афганцы принимают на себя ведущую роль в обеспечении безопасности в своей стране и добавляются общественное доверие своих граждан. Афганские вооруженные силы, силы которые являются новостными достиженными современной техники, которые находятся под контролем гражданским властей, огромный успех. Однако афганскому правительству все еще проходится бортазия с большими проблемами, связанными с обеспечением внутренней безопасности, для чего его э, необходимо создавать национальную полицию, которая наблюдает со сохранением порядка в стрефе охраны права и защищает граждан. Права человека должны служить точкой состояния публичной и международной политики в Афганистане. Афганские женщины, которые вперед власти Талибана были лишними основных прав и свобод, в настоящее время являются членами парламента, занимают высокие правительственные должности и представляют свою страну на различных конференциях. Страна в на большом масштабе, чем до сих пор обеспечала доступ своих граждан в объектам здравоохранения, однако качество этих услуг все еще оставляется большим вызванием. Новым клиникам и больницам нужен квалификационный персонал, так же, как до сих пор проблем является в количестве лекарственных средств и медицинского образования. Для, стринг, для стран участников АСЕЕ эти вызовы должны еще 20 секунд. Эти вызвы должны являться симуляциями so, увеличения. Okay. Спасибо за внимание. Все. Thank you. Then we give the floor to Mr. De Vecchio from Italy. La ringrazio e ringrazio eh, soprattutto. In questo momento il collega De Donnea per aver posto all'attenzione del nostro consesso un argomento di grande importanza. L'anno 2014 segnerà il termine della funzione combat da parte delle forze militari internazionali, ma non segnerà certamente l'abbandono da parte della comunità internazionale di quel Paese. Infatti se ciò avvenisse... L'Afghanistan correrebbe il rischio di vedere interrotto il processo di pacificazione interna, lo sviluppo economico e sociale del Paese e il percorso verso la democrazia che ha permesso, dopo oltre 35 anni di assenza, di dotare quel Paese di istituzioni legittimamente e democraticamente realizzate. In questo quadro, e in questo, per questo sono assolutamente favorevole alla risoluzione di Donea, la nostra organizzazione non può non essere pienamente coinvolta. Come più volte è stato ribadito in tutti i consessi in cui l'OSCE ha precisato che continuerà ad operare per collaborare con quel Paese per il suo sviluppo sulla strada della democrazia. Questa risoluzione indica ai Paesi membri e partner come operare li invita a incrementare il dialogo con le autorità afghane, a sostenere lo sforzo che il Governo sta effettuando per la creazione di una, azione, di una nazione moderna, a promuovere iniziative per il superamento delle difficoltà regionali e in questo senso potranno essere preziosissimi i contribu contributi dell'Uzbekistan, del Tajikistan, del Turkmenistan che confinano con quelle Paese asiatico, ma anche del Kazakistan, del Kyrgyzstan, che sono vicini a quell'area. Tutti i Paesi membri della nostra organizzazione. Ecco perché credo che questa risoluzione debba essere accolta con grande consenso dalla nostra organizzazione. Noi dovremo essere vicini anche nel futuro all'Afghanistan perché quel Paese non, può, non ricada nella barbarie che l'aveva caratterizzato qualche anno fa. Then I give the floor to Mr. D'Amico from Italy. Grazie, Presidente. Io mh, concordo con quanto detto dal mio collega sulla necessità di andare avanti e 
cercare di, eh, anche discutendone nell'ambito della nostra organizzazione, di eh, portare l'Afghanistan a uno sviluppo reale e democratico. E volevo so solamente con questo intervento ricordare che nella sessione di Oslo di due anni fa era stata approvata una risoluzione all'unanimità sull'Afghanistan e penso che sia utile ricordare anche adesso che ehm, questa risoluzione, che contiene anche alcuni punti che erano già toccati e inseriti in quella precedente, va a continuare su una linea che noi come OSCE ci stiamo dando ed è giusto ricordare questa linea che è partita anche in, in diverse eh, sessioni, in, in sessioni precedenti perché eh, non è stato, credo, ricordato nella risoluzione il, eh, quella, mh, quella risoluzione approvata in quell'anno. Quindi mi sembrava giusto sottolinearla e, e sottolineare che eh, si debba tener conto anche di quello che era stato previsto eh, come la lotta alla diffusione degli agenti chimici che servono per trasformare la droga e altre, altre mh, previsioni che erano previste in quella risoluzione. Grazie. Thank you. And I now give the floor to Mr. Ernan from Turkey. Thank you, Madam Chair. First of all, I would like to thank to the sponsor from uh, Belgium, for my colleague, for this draft resolution on the development of the OSC cooperation with Afghanistan by 2014 and beyond. There is a need to create strong regional ownership as well as Afghan-owned and Afghan-driven process to overcome the challenges this country is facing. We are cognizant of the fact that a strong, effective, and modern Afghan national army and police will be crucial players in the transition process in the run-up to 2014 and beyond. In this context, capacity building and training programs for Afghan law enforcement institutions should remain one of our main priorities to attain a strong and sustainable Afghan force in the service of its citizens. We are pleased to note that the first follow ministerial meeting of the Istanbul process held in Kabul and on 14th of June was an important milestone as the first set of CB CBMs that will be implemented was confirmed and several countries of the herd of Asia volunteered to take the lead in this regard. We look forward for their implementation. On the other hand, The acknowledge, acknowledgement of the role and involvement of international and regional organizations during this meeting is a clear indication of the potential that may evolve in so far as OSCE's contribution is concerned. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And I now give the floor to Mr. Yule from Denmark. Thank you very much. After a long Expensive and problematic war that gave much more problems than uh, it solved, time has come to use non-military and non-army methods. I have all the time hoped that we could begin with non-military methods in uh, Afghanistan. I'm sorry that it, the, the war began. We lost the war and it will take many years and big challenges to win the peace. I, rem I recommend all to vote for this resolution as a start of building up in Afghanistan. Thank you, and that concludes the debate on the draft resolution, and we will now move to consider the two amendments submitted to the, this resolution. Uh, and I shall allow the proposer to speak for a maximum of one minute, and then I will allow the same time to an opponent, opponent and then I will ask for the sponsor's opinion. Uh, and we go to the first amendment, and I call Mrs. Aknasarova from Kyrgyzstan to propose amendment number one. Да, этот вопрос очень большой важности. Развитие геополитических процессов, как минимум последние десятилетия, наглядно демонстрирует тот факт, что Афганистан превратился в один из регионов, ситуация в котором оказывает серьезное влияние на общее состояние климата 
в системе континентальной и глобальной безопасности. Страны по-разному видят перспективу развития ситуации в Центральной Азии и Афганистане, поскольку оценивать их с точки зрения своих специфических интересов и исторического опыта. Эти различия особенно важны, учитывая, что традиционные географические интересы, скорее всего, выйдут на передний план в случае серьезного обострения ситуации в Афганистане после вывода войск в Западной коалиции. Хотелось бы, чтобы ОБС сыграл чрезвычайно важную роль в стабилизации ситуации и в демократическом развитии Афганистана. Рекомендует. И поэтому я считаю, что следует подключить пункт обязательно, чтобы ОБС соблюдал баланс между приоритетом политического характера и безопасности в Афганистане. Спасибо. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? What is the sponsor's opinion? Pas de problème. Thank you. Then we will take a vote on amendment number one. Will all those in favor of amendment number one please raise the voting cards? Anyone against? Abstentions? Amendment number one is adopted. And we go on to amendment number two, and I call Mr. Adirebov of Kazakhstan to propose amendment number two. Уважаемые коллеги, мы поддерживаем данную резолюцию и считаем очень важным усиление диалога ОБСЕ с региональными организациями для более полной, эффективной помощи Афганистану и коллективной борьбы с угрозами, происходящими из этой страны вперед и после вывода войск коалиционных сил из Афганистана. Казахстан в этом весьма заинтересован. Со своей стороны, в 2010 году Казахстан на полях неформального совещания министра иностранных дел ОБСЕ инициировал встречу с участием руководителей восьми международных организаций, включая ООН, ОБСЕ, СВМД, СНГ, ОДКБ, Совет Европы, Европейский Союз, НАТО, которые среди прочего рассмотрели вопросы Афганистана. В этой связи мы предлагаем давать после пункта 16 резолюции указанную поправку, которая у вас имеется. Спасибо. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak against the amendment? What is the sponsor's opinion? Je suis, je suis d'accord. Thank you. Then I shall put amendment number two to the vote. All those in favor of amendment number two, please raise the voting cards. Anyone against? Abstentions? Amendment number two is adopted. And that also concludes the discussion of amendments, and thank you very much. So now we formally move to the vote on the draft resolution. Would those in favor of adopting the draft resolution please raise the voting cards? Anyone against? Abstentions? Thank you. The draft resolution is adopted. And that also concludes our work on all the draft resolutions. And we have been discussing 12. Thank you very much. You've done a great job. And I can understand if you think we are strictly about the speaking times, but uh, we get through it. We got through it. So now we move forward to, forward to the election of committee officers. This is the only remaining item of business for the committee to conclude. And we will elect officers for the 22nd annual session of the Assembly. Nominations closed at 11.30 a.m. this morning, and the International Secretariat informs me that the following nominations have been received in the table office. For chair, there has, we have uh, two nominations. It uh, is Mrs. Osa Lindestam from Sweden and Mr. Werinen Naubauer from Austria. For Vice Chair, we have one nomination, that is Mrs. Susanne Bratley from Norway. And for Rapporteur, we have one nomination, it is Mrs. Vilja Aleknaite Abramikiene from Lithuania. The positions of Vice Chair and Rapporteur are no, not contested, and I therefore declare that Mrs. Susanne Bratley from Norway has been elected to the position of Vice Chair in accordance with Rule 35.5. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> this is a new experience. 
electing myself. Okay. It's quite good. Uh, and I also declare that Mrs. Vilja Aleknaite Abramikiene from Lithuania has been elected as rapporteur in accordance with Rule 35.5. And we will now have an election for a position of chair, and I will hand over to the Secretariat to explain the balloting process to the delegates. Tina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair. Members of the committee will now vote by secret vote for the position of chair of the committee. I remind you that the two candidates are Ms. Osa Lindestam from Sweden and Mr. Werner Neubauer from Austria. Ballot papers have been prepared for the election to vote, please place a cross by the name of your preferred candidate. The candidate with the highest numbers of votes will be elected. In case of a tie, lots will be drawn. We have appointed Mrs. Gordana Chomic from Serbia and Lord Baroness from United Kingdom as tellers to oversee the conduct of the elections and the counting of the votes. We kindly ask the two tellers to join our procedural team uh, for the elections. For members, please come to the podium to collect your ballot paper. You must have your voting card with you. Please hand over the voting card to the staff in exchange for a ballot paper. The committee will be suspended while the votes are counted and will then resume for the result to be announced. The result of the elections will also be announced in the plenary session. Uh, please, please. I, may I ask you on the procedure, may, may I ask you? Of course. Thank you. For being clear, because the names uh, are, are not maybe so easy, if it's possible to put uh, a paper with the two names, uh, so it's easy to read and write it uh, well. Mr. Mr. D'Amico, the name of each, the two candidate names are yes, on the ballot. Yes, the two candidates yeah. put a, a paper with the with but the they're two, on the ballot. The you get a ballot. They are on the ballot. They are on okay, the ballot. Okay, thank you very much. I didn't You're know welcome. about that. Thank you.
Please, if you have not voted yet, come and do so. The ballot is open for another two minutes. So please make sure you vote within the next two minutes or let's approach the podium within the next two minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. D'Amico, without a chairperson, let me uh, give you the floor. I would like to say that uh, I saw how it was, I don't know how will be the, the result. Now everyone voted, but I have been 19 times to see and have uh, monitoring uh, elections all over the OSE. And one of the main topic is the secrecy of the vote. We are going to see and say you are wrong in many countries if there is no secrecy of vote and we are voting this way without secrecy. With everyone could look, I saw the vote of many other candidates. Everyone should vote in front of the others, in front of the, 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 the people sitting over there. That's not fair. We are not working in a fair way. We cannot go around to say you are, you are wrong because there is no secrecy of vote and then we vote in this way. This is wrong. Be careful with it because we are working very, very badly in this way. Is there anybody else who hasn't voted? Please come and do so. Otherwise, we will declare the elections closed. Anybody who hasn't voted? That doesn't seem to be the case, so we declare the elections for closed. Thank you.
Okay, then elections uh, are finished and I have the results. Uh, this is the result of election of the chair of the General Committee on Political Affairs. Mrs. Osa Lindestam had 49 votes. Mr. Werner Nobauer had 18 votes. 70 member, 71 members have voted. There were four spoiled ballots. And Mrs. Osa Lindestam is accordingly elected as chair. Congratulations. So, now have you witnessed a historical moment. This is the first time there are elected three women as officers in a <laughs> committee in the OSCE PA. But we will not be the female or the gender alibi for this uh, assembly, you know. So we still will focus on gender issues. Okay? This concludes the work of the first committee for the 21st annual session. And I would like to thank you colleagues for your most co constructive, constructive cooperation in the work of this committee. You have all done a great job. You have accept, accepted strict speaking times. And we did, we did get through our business and we did get through it in time. It's been a great pleasure for me to chair this meeting and a great honor also to witness the female chair. Congratulations once again, Osa. And thank you also to the interpreters. We could not have done this without you. I think we give them applause. So this is my last message to you. Please take all your belongings with you when you leave this room. And thank you once again and this meeting is adjourned.